So let's talk about reading our exponential functions. So we'll kind of talk about this in two directions. One, looking at a function and being able to read it, be able to understand what it's telling us, and also the form of being given information and forming our exponential function. So we'll kind of form the exponential functions and then see how the pieces come through. So, as we talked about in the last video, our exponential functions have the form a times b to the power of x, where our variable is in the exponent. It's made up of these pieces where a is our initial value and b is the growth factor. So, a being the initial value is a starting point or a y-intercept. B as a growth factor can come through in a few different ways, and one of those ways is described as a percentage, so this percentage increase or decrease. There will be other ways that it comes through, and we'll talk about a few of those in this example down below. But let's talk about percentages for a moment. So we could think of the growth factor as this 1 plus r. Now this r, this rate, kind of this rate of growth, um, we could be increasing, and that's where r would be more than, or sorry, b would be more than 1. I'm going to adjust this, sorry. Or let's even, I can adjust this with r would be more than 0, and decreasing, sorry about this, r would be less than 0. So increasing, you're adding it on, decreasing, it would be negative, so you would be subtracting. So, for example, if a function is growing by 4%, then b would be 1, so you always have that 1 in there, plus 0 0.04. So, because you're getting that positive value with r being more than 0, it's increasing, and we would see this value for b that would go into our exponential function of 1.04. If our function's decreasing, um, which could also be described as decaying for our exponential functions. So if it was decaying by 4%, then b would come through 1 minus 0.04. So that negative 0.04 is where r would be negative, which would give us a 0.96. Let's talk about percentages for a moment, because with all of this math that we do, the most common place for making mistakes is just switching between this percentage and decimal form. So as a refresher, 4%, what you want to do is think about where the decimal is. So if you have 4%, the decimal would be right there. And then to change to decimal form, so this is in percentage form with 4%, we would move the decimal to the left two spots. So 4% is the same thing as 0 0.04. If we had 40%, then our decimal would be right there after the zero. So moving to the left two spots, this would be 0.4. So just be careful with that step because the common mistake is to mix those up. And 4% decay or growth is very different from 40% decay or growth. So we want to get those straight. So what's happening when we look at, let's say, this 4% growth that's occurring, what's happening with B is that this value of 1 is this idea of 100%. So it's like when our function's growing, we're keeping 100% of what we already had, and then we're adding on an extra 4% each day or hour or whatever increment of time that's happening. So that's where the 1 is coming through as this 100% and 4%. So this 1.04, you could think of this as us taking 104% of something, and that's why it's growing, is because it's getting larger than it initially was. It's larger than its 100%. Whereas with decay, or when it's decreasing, this is the idea of taking 100%, but we're taking away 4% from it. So what we're doing is we're taking 96% of the whole each time, each time we use this exponential function. So with that, it's decreasing in size, and it's bumping down by 4% each time, 
which as a whole means we're taking 96% of it. So with our growth factor, there is this idea of percentages involved. So we're gonna see those coming up quite a bit. All right, so down here, what we're going to do is look at these different scenarios and form the exponential function. So we're looking at a colony of bacteria and then we'll have a passage of time. So we're being described as each day, each day. Uh, then we'll talk about what happens if we change time. But let's kind of get some notation going. So I'm going to describe these as a function P of T, where P is the population of bacteria. And then T, I'm going to have represent the number of days. All right, so a colony starts at 30 and increases by 20% each day. So I have the starting value, and then because it's increasing by a percentage, I know this is going to be an exponential function. So this will be exponential, that starting at 30 is our value for A, increases by 20%, so that's where we're going to need to find b, so we're taking 1 plus that 20% in decimal form, which is a 0.2. So b is going to be a 1.2. So our function p of t will have our initial value of 30 times our growth factor of 1.2, and then we'll have an exponent with our variable t. So the idea being we could plug in a certain number of days and this will tell us how large our colony of bacteria is now growing from 30 and adding on 20% each day. A colony starts at 13,500 and decreases by 8% each day. So it's really because of that decreasing by a certain percentage each day that I know this is exponential. And yes, we're in the exponential function, so we can assume this is exponential, but what we're going to start doing is mixing our different types of functions together. So we want to be able to recognize these and what characteristics make it exponential. In this case, it's this percentage each day that's occurring. All right, so starting at 13,500, so that'll be our value for A decreases by 8%, so our growth factor, we're going to take 1, it's decreasing, so this will be negative, and then 8% is 0 0.08, and that should be a 0.92. So the idea being that we're taking 92% of our population each time. So for my function, we'll have our initial value of 13,500, times growth factor of 0.92 and then our exponent of t. So with this I can see where my population starts and then it's decaying because we're taking 92 percent each time. So because it's below 100 percent it's decaying whereas up above here I could think of that as like 120 percent of the population so it's grown. All right, our colony starts at 200 and increases by 12%. And then I'm throwing in this little twist here of every eight hours. So let's just make everything else and then we'll talk about that timing of every eight hours. So it's starting at 200, it's increasing by 12%. So we're doing one plus 0.12. So we're taking a 112%. So I have P of T equals 200 times that 1.12. But now in my exponent, I want to change things a little bit. So usually I just put T. So the idea being, if T is representing the number of days, if it's been one day, I would plug in one here and I'm taking 112% of 200. However, this is occurring every eight hours, so if one day has passed, 
this should have grown three times in that day. Now where I'm getting that from is 24 hours divided up into increments of eight hours. That gives me this idea of three times per day that this growth should be occurring. So what I'm going to do is next to t, I'm going to multiply it by 3. So what that would mean is, like, if I checked what would happen within one day, I would have that 200 times 1.12, and then in my exponent, I would have a 3 times 1. So this would take care of that there's been this exponential growth three times within that single day. So we're getting this multiplication so that that growth can happen more often. All right, this next one, a colony starts at 13,800 and then decreases by 350 each day. Now here's a little twist too, because this isn't a percentage and it's not giving me a factor. It's not like we're doubling or tripling, which we'll talk about in the next example. It's just decreasing by a certain amount, which we talked about in the last video of this kind of, we would just be subtracting 350 each month. And with that, this is actually linear. This is a linear function where we have our y-intercept, and then we have this rate of change that would be the slope of our line. So this right here will be p of t equals, we have our initial value, but then we're subtracting 350 per day. So the key being is basically units is what this could come down to, is that it's not a percentage, it's not a multiplication of anything, it's subtraction of a certain amount. All right, our next one, we're starting at 750 and then doubles every day. Now this is similar to the example that we looked at in the last video. We looked at doubling, and what that came down to is our value for b ended up being 2. We want to break that down a little bit more. It's the idea that we're taking 100% plus another 100%. So it's like we're keeping what we have already and then adding it onto itself. So we're adding another 100%. So that's where this value of 2 is coming from, if you wanted to think of it in terms of that broken down 1 plus r scenario. So with this, we'll have p of t equals 750 times, and then we'll have this growth factor of 2, and then every day, so we'll have t. All right, this last one here we have starts at 1,000 and it's decreasing with a half-life of 1,000 days. All right, so up above here, that doubling is multiplication, so multiplying by two, so that's where we get that it's exponential. Sorry, I didn't make that clear. Multiplication and division go hand in hand with each other. So where we're talking about half-life here, if you see half-life, that's also going to deal with exponential because it's like dividing by two or you could think of it as this multiplication by a half. So what we're going to be seeing here is when we go to find b, it's a half-life, b is going to have this factor of one half. It's decreasing, so it's like b is 0.5, or you could think of this as taking 100% and taking away 50%, so we're left with this 50%. So let's put this together with our initial value of 1 million. Our growth factor of 0.5, or you could put in the fraction 1 half, and then t. However, one last little twist for us is that this is cutting in half every 1,000 days. So if I plugged in one right now, that would be in one day that it created uh, half of one million. But I should be getting that half of one million after 1,000 days. So like up above here, when we looked at multiplying by three, because it happened three times per day, 
that kind of was the idea that it happened multiple times within one day, so it all kind of, you had to kind of squish it into a single day, whereas this is stretching it out. It's spreading out the amount of time, and with that, that'll present itself as division. So division by a thousand. So for this to work, how it's described up above there, if a thousand days has passed, so if we plugged in 1,000, in fact, I'll do this off to the side here. So if 1,000 days have passed, we should be taking 1 million times 0 0.5. And then in our exponent, we would have 1,000 divided by 1,000, which is just 1. So then we can see that we're taking half of that 1 million, just like we should in that amount of time. So by dividing, it'll stretch out the amount of time before that half-life actually occurs. So there's some different ways that we can form the functions. And then with these, also just take a moment that, to read the function itself and seeing how it makes sense related to the wording that was given to us.